Ready Player One is directed by Steven Spielberg and based on the novel by Ernest Klein. A very good novel, a very fun novel, that one I really enjoyed and so I was excited for the film. Even though the promos for the film have been a little, should I say, iffy. There's not been a lot of great impressive trailers for this film, but I was still excited to see it. This film is about the year 2045, where Wade Watts, played by Ty Sheridan, is essentially living life as is because the world is not the same as it used to be. A lot of people have now been attached to this world called the Oasis, which is this virtual world where you can be a video game or a movie character, and you're essentially living that life as a virtual character for the most part. However, the maker of the Oasis, James Halliday, played by Mark Rylance, has suddenly passed passed away and in that he has left behind his entire fortune which can only be given to someone if they are able to find a certain easter egg by the end of the game. It's the one that finishes the entire game. And so everybody's on the race to find this one easter egg so that they can inherit the entire fortune that Halliday has left behind. The funny thing about Ready Player One is that it's a film that has come out at a time where it needed to happen because when you watch Ready Player One, it's important to understand the world we live in. We have a lot of things that are coming out nowadays, which are coming back nowadays, which were used to exist like 20, 30 years ago because of nostalgia, because we want those things again, because we want to see those things again, because we want to use those things again. Record players, for example, for the longest time they were gone and then suddenly there was a huge comeback of them. My point is <laughs> Ready Player One has a lot of nostalgic beats to it and that way this is actually a really good movie but it also goes beyond the nostalgia there's a lot of great stuff here this is actually a really good commentary not just on the generation as we know it right now which it relies so much on those things but also on the future about how technology can evolve how it can transform and how we can look at it and how it can have differences in terms of how we approach life around us that is actually something very interesting about Ready Player One to me is that it actually tells a very interesting story about how people can evolve with technology and how technology can evolve with us. And this is anchored with some amazing special effects that are some of the best I've seen in a Spielberg movie. This is one of his most visually stunning films, if not his most visually stunning film. This is a gorgeous movie with tons of references packed into it. This movie is essentially a geek's dream. You can actually make all sorts of things in this movie appear, and they do appear. And if they don't appear, they're called out by name. So that's the coolest thing. Like You can actually look at this movie and pretty much imagine everything that you've loved as a child appear in this film, which I actually really admire. And that way, you can have a lot of fun watching this movie, and I'm sure you'll have more fun watching it once it comes out on Blu-ray, because you'll be pausing certain frames to find certain things that you may have missed out when you saw it the first time, which is why this movie makes for a good repeat viewing, because, yeah, like I said, you can find all that stuff. The one I kept geeking out about is that at one point in time, you actually see the Arkham Knight in the, uh, in the movie, uh, that was that was cool. I actually kept yelling in the theater, Arkham Knight, Arkham Knight. So there are other things, but the film also has some amazing performances. Ty Sheridan is really great in this. He was very entertaining. I really liked his character. Olivia Cook for me was the best part in terms of the acting. She was amazing. She was a very charismatic character, and I really liked her. She was really a lot of the soul of this movie. Ben Mendelsohn was phenomenal in this. He was also very, very like corporate, stoogy kind of a guy, but he was owning up to it. Like he was really into that role, which I liked. I liked that he was being a corporate, you know, guy. He was just a really cruel corporate guy. James Halliday in this movie I really liked because Mark Rylance in this movie essentially plays the awkward nerd who's created this amazing thing, but he's just like, I don't know, I, I did this, I went on a date, I, I don't know. He's just acting like a nerd and I actually really like that because I'm a lot like that. Where it's like, you know, I guess I was there, I was with a friend and that's it. That's it. He's just really awkward in this film, which I really liked. And I think that's one of the my favorite things about this movie and maybe in a way I connected it that way. There's also a very touching scene with him at one point which I was really moved by. That was really effective. I can't talk about the references so much but I would love to. Like there are so many references. There is one scene in this movie where they go in somewhere. I'm not gonna say where but they go in and I was jumping in my seat. I was so excited because that is one of my favorite movies of all time. So yeah, I, I love the reference that they bring up with that. I'm not gonna spoil it. I, I'm gonna 
wait for you to see it for yourself. This is actually a very well directed movie. It looks amazing. The musical score was something I was confused about. I didn't know what to expect from it. It turned out to be amazing. I think Alan Silvestri has done a really good job here. This is one of his best scores in years. It may not work for everybody. It's not the kind of score that you would expect for a movie like this, but I really enjoyed it for what it was. My biggest issue with Ready Player One, however, is its characters. While I have praised the performances and I did enjoy some of the characters, the depth given to them is not much, and the film tries to do certain things at points to make you care a little bit more about their personal lives, but it really doesn't work out as well as I think they were trying to make it work out. There's a lot of points where Wade's family life is brought up and how it's not the greatest and how there's an abusive boyfriend to his aunt. It's just not the... it just... it doesn't feel as fleshed out as it needed to be and it feels a little too stereotypical and I felt like that was a major impact point that was lost. I also thought that there were a lot of things with Samantha, Olivia Cook's character, where a lot wasn't known and I feel like a lot would have benefited in this movie. I would have actually liked to know a little bit more about her past and a lot of the supporting characters I feel the same. I feel like there was a lot of depth in this movie that was kind of lost at points and I would have liked to know a little bit more about them. I felt that the characters were lacking at a lot of points. The movie could be called out for some of its cheesiness I guess. But I think that was the point. I think in that way this movie is an 80s throwback from start to finish where it's trying to be 80s cheesy and 80s referential while also being futuristic. So I guess you could create a defense for certain things in this movie on the basis of that. But as a critic who's watching it, someone's going to be like, it's a bit too cheesy. And there are some cheesy moments in it, some very cheesy moments in it. But I think I get the vibe that Spielberg was going for. So if that is the way he wanted to approach it i love it i think it's fine i think it's fine i just i don't think that it's the best way to do it but i think i understand what he was trying to go for my other issue with the film was its runtime it's a long movie and it does feel like it's long at points it does drag a bit even though it's a very fast-paced movie it's never really slowing down it's about two hours and 20 minutes though it doesn't need to be two hours and 20 minutes i feel like it could have been a little shorter than that but I think my issues with the film really just stopped there. Those are my only issues with it. I had a blast watching this movie. I really enjoyed it. It was a really great experience and I can't wait to see it again. I'm going to give Ready Player One an 8.5 out of 10. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. And before I end off the video, I want to tell you about something that I'm doing with Stardust. Stardust is a video app that now is on the App Store where you can record your quick reactions on movies or trailers or TV shows that you just saw. If you download the Stardust app on your phone right now from the App Store, it's a free app. You can record your reactions on it. You can follow me on it. Here's my um, link if you'd like to follow that. And I will share your reactions to movies that are coming in the future. Hopefully by the time Infinity War comes out, you guys will have some stuff to to say and I would love to feature your reactions in the review. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. If you like this, please do subscribe and I'll see you guys at the movies.